Elizabeth Tapper was born on New Year's Eve in Seattle in 1929. Knowing from childhood that she wanted to be an artist, she began to learn printmaking at age 20. In 1980, Elizabeth established a studio in Seattle and became a full-time printmaker. In addition to her own extensive printmaking, Elizabeth has successfully collaborated throughout her career with over 100 artists, including Art Hansen, Faye Jones, Gwen Knight, Jeffrey Mitchell, and Mike Spafford. Elizabeth Tapper's studio is now located on Fur Island. I just love the studio I have now. It's the most beautiful studio I've, I've ever had. I love going in and seeing the press waiting for me to crank it all on and uh, the tools that I have. The light in the studio is just marvelous. It's just a pleasure to be there, be surrounded by the tools that I work with. Over the years, the past years, I have acquired a wonderful collection. And each one is a special moment for me. I look at it and I can re relive that creative experience with another artist. The whole collection is very, very precious to me. It's um, the gift of life. I was first doing printmaking full time. I was just additioning, which is a solitary thing in the studio. And gradually, artists began to come to me, and I work, worked with other artists, helping them develop the plates and make an image. But uh, I discovered something I hadn't anticipated, and that was the uh, collaboration between artist, printer, press, and the developing image. It was like four voices in a quartet. Hi, Susan. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. So great it's to so see, see you. you. <laughs> so, Susan, what have you been thinking about? Well, I've been working on a series of paintings of, about beds. Uh -huh. And I... What I'd like to do is make a print that is not a copy of this painting, but something that has a similar feeling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've been working with oil pastels on paper, and there's something about the texture of oil pastel that I'd like to try to okay. get something similar in a print. I and agree. I'm remembering some Russell Chatham prints that you showed me last time I was here that oh. have, there's something in the sky of those okay. uh, prints that is interesting to me. I think these are the ones that we, you were talking about, Susan? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, see, uh, these, the sky is beautiful on these, mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. the, um, he's made these marks in the sky. And I, I like the, the random look of them and the overall tone that he gets. And I'm interested in using these same similar kinds of marks in making a print that will be, uh, have some of the same feeling of this painting, mm -hmm. but will clearly be a different medium. So Susan, what I hear you saying is that you want to go on with this theme, the bed theme, but this isn't quite saying what you really want to say. Well, you know, there's nothing like matching. So uh, you want to use this process to further expand the ideas you've begun here. Mm -hmm. It's another language. Yes. Etching is a different language. It is indeed. Yeah. So how do you achieve this look that is in the sky? Uh, to make an etching, you have to protect the plate with something that's acid resistant. It's called a ground. And you work into that plate then, taking off that ground, and that's the part that get etched by the acid. This particular ground is called white ground. And it's wonderful to work with because it's you can easily manipulate it, you can easily you can wipe into it, you can scrape it off, you can change it in any way you want to. Susan, let me show you how this works. Um, this is the zinc plate we'll be using in on the size, and um, you can apply it with a brush in a very brush-like manner, in a very painterly-like manner. And what you see that's white is not going to be etched. So anything that's not white will be etched with the acid. Okay. 
you can make marks in this with any tool. For example, if you just want to do a, a drawing, a, a single line, you can use these bamboo pins, which work real well, and you, and you can do a different uh, dimension on the line. Um, you can take a tool like this, which is just a simple old tongue depressor, and make a different kind of mark. And the variety of marks is what makes the vitality in the end result. You can wipe away areas. Say you wanted to make a very clear edge to this. You can take a, a Q-tip and manipulate it any way you want. You can even take what you pull off and make marks in the open space here. There's just so much you can do. So um, now this, this is the ways of creating the image. And then what we will do, this has to harden first so it will be acid resistant. And then we put an aqua tint on it. Mm. Because these areas, these large areas, would wipe out in the printing. Okay, Elizabeth, I'm gonna give this a try. So I think this is what I'd like. Okay, you're seeing this as kind of a background for the image. Mm -hmm. um, I think at this point it might be a good idea to um, put a little bit more definition as to the pillows oh, and, okay. and the blanket folded over in the sheet. And, and how do I do that? Just by putting more white ground. So that part does not get etched. So oh, these okay. will be white, positive white areas. And that will define the image a little better without being too different definitive. The thing is, we can change anything we want to at any point. In other words, if we pull a proof and you don't like to see what's there, we'll, we'll change it. Okay, so I can, can remove things you can that remove I don't things, like yes. and add stuff that yes, I want. you can. Great, excellent. This is the application of a dot pattern, an aqua tint on the plate. The traditional way is to dust rosin powder on the plate and heat it so that it adheres. I like this method better. The mask protects from the spray ground. The spray goes beyond the plate to show that the pattern on the plate is good. The plate is then placed into the acid bath. The acid bites around the dot pattern to create a surface that will hold the ink. Because the surface of the plate is so delicate, I use the light touch of the feather to remove the bubbles that rise during the process. The plate is rinsed with water to wash the acid off. It looks good, Susan. Then I'll test it. Yeah, I think we got a deep enough bite. Excellent. The plate then needs to be cleaned with solvent to remove the ground before inking. This is important so that the ground is removed from all the etched areas. The ink is rolled on with a brayer. 
care must be taken that the entire plate is covered with ink. The excess ink is then removed from the surface of the plate. The surface is wiped carefully so that the ink below the surface is not disturbed. The plate is then hand wiped to bring out the highlights and protect the subtleties and the nuances. This step is the most difficult and can make the difference between a good print and one that must be discarded. It can take some time, and each plate reads differently. So, Susan, let's take a look at where we have been and where we are now. Mm -hmm. And this was with the white ground. Um, and then here, you've used some tools to create marks. Mm -hmm. um, dry point, this is dry point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I used this stylus for doing dry point marks. So mm -hmm. I made marks like these um, expressive uh, marks and then I used this tool for making these kinds of marks, mm -hmm. pressing down hard on the plate. And, and I also started doing some burnishing. Oh yeah, right. These areas look like you have, especially up here in this corner. Mm -hmm. So I used this tool to rub hard on the plate and it, knock back some of that texture. Right, it flattens out the aqua tint. So Elizabeth, we've worked this plate and brought it to this point mm -hmm. and I feel ready to start adding color. Good, let's do it. So Susan, we're going to transfer what's on the first plate, the black plate, onto a blank plate so we can develop the color. So this process is called offset. Yes. And now we will pull up the image. And you take the plate out. Okay. Now the image will offset onto that plate. So then you could locate how to develop the plate for the printing of the, the first color, the plate color. Susan, that's beautiful. That's great. That's going to give me something to work with. Okay. So now we have transferred the image from the first plate onto the second plate, and we can begin to work that plate to print the color. And they will be lined up. Now that the three plates have been completed, we can ink with color for the full color proof. Each plate is inked separately. The first plate is inked with both red and yellow, and this is possible on one plate because the colors are separate. Again, the plates are white to remove the surface ink. The second plate is inked in blue, and the third plate inked in black. The third plate is the key image because it has the most specific information. Again, all three plates are finished with the critical hand wiping process. Now the plates are ready to be printed. Go, Elizabeth. Oh, whoa, that's beautiful. Oh, it is. I think that's it. I do too. Great. Susan, we've come a long way from this beginning to the final proof. Yes, and I'm so interested at, in how we're able to go from this flat, raw image to this final print 
by working these plates over and over again. And I couldn't have done it without you. Oh, we did it together too. Elizabeth's been able to be successful working with many artists because of the fact that she is an artist and understands some of their concerns. She's been able to work with artists that have no understanding of the mediums that she's working with and other artists who are somewhat familiar. And being able to develop a dialogue so that they, the artists, can achieve the kinds of things and the kinds of images they want to make under her tutelage. And she brings enormous expertise and an ability to anticipate some of their questions and to steer them as to what in her arsenal of techniques will most possibly achieve their goals. I had been making images, making art since I was about seven. At least that was my first memory of having done it. And then in my 20s, I made a discovery and that was printmaking. And I find that printmaking is uh, mysterious. It gives you gifts, it makes you think. Uh, it's like opening a door. You want to go into it and learn more, feel more, discover more. I first met Elizabeth Tapper about 10 years ago. I wanted to make etchings and Sam Davidson of Davidson Galleries in Seattle brought me to Elizabeth's studio and we began working together. When we work together, we have extended conversations about art and politics and psychology and animals and philosophy. And I find that these conversations contribute as much to the creative process as the how to make a print part. Elizabeth Tapper is an inspiring collaborator. One of the things about printmaking that I love so much is the layering, where you're working with more than one plate and you pull an image from one plate and you layer that on top of the image from the second plate and the third plate and so forth. It's like life. It's where, where your life layers one experience on top of another. It's rich and deep. A brother who was in my studio one day and he said to me, you don't ever have to retire, do you? And I said, no, not ever. <laughs>